What's up everyone? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And if this is your first time here, welcome. And please subscribe so you don't miss out my next video. So today we're gonna be talking about generating functions part two. Alright, so today I'll be discussing a little more into generating functions. With that in mind, if you don't know what a generating function is, or you need a refresher on what it is, then you can click on the link right here to see the first part of this series. But if you're already comfortable with generating functions, let's talk about application of generating function. So what we will be doing today is we want to find a closed form of a sequence, given that you know recursive formula of that sequence. So that was really mouthful. I guess it's better to just look at an example. So suppose I have this sequence. So my sequence will be a0, a1 all the way to infinity, a0 defined to be 0, a1 defined to be 3, and for anything afterward, I define a2, a3, a4 recursively. If n is at least 2, a n will be a n minus 1 plus twice of a n minus 2. With that, you learn a2 from a1 and a0. You learn a3 from a2 and a1. You learn a4 from a3 and a2, so on and so forth. So let's learn more about this sequence. As I say, we can learn about a2 from a1, a0. So if you plug n equal to 2 in that formula, you get a2 equal to 3 plus twice of 0, which gives you 3. Likewise, a3 will be 9, a4 will be 15, so on and so forth. Alright, so this is nice and cool, right? So with this, you can learn about a anything. You can learn about a5, it's just a4 plus twice of a3. You can learn about a10 if you know a9, a8. But that gets tedious really quickly, right? Like let's say you want to learn about A50. You have to go one step at a time to 10, 11, 12, all the way to 20, all the way to 30, until you get to 48, to 49, and then you use A48 and 49 to compute A50. I can ask again, what is A100, right? And, and that's not really awful to compute if you only know recursive formula. Even worse, somebody can come in and ask, what is AN? I want a closed formula of AN. I want a formula that I just plug in N and give out the answer. Not like a formula that I plug in N and I need to find AN minus 1 and AN minus 2 first. Surprisingly, those questions can be answered using generating functions. So what do we do? Well, we already have a sequence, right? A0, A1, A2, A3. So we turn that sequence into a generating function. Remember, generating function is a fancy way to record the sequence. So a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x cubed, so on and so forth. To make our life convenient, we're gonna write the sum from 0 to infinity, a and x to the n. And we will call that generating function big A. And the purpose is we're gonna start from recursive formula and figure out what big A is, what is the formula of big A. Okay, so let's look at the recursive formula. We have a n equal to a n minus 1 plus twice of a n minus 2 whenever n is at least 2. So what do we do? We want to start here and get big A, right? So what we do is we multiply the whole equation by x to the n and then sum up from 2 to infinity. Okay, why 2? Why don't we just sum from 0 to infinity so that it match the form of big A? Well, we have to start from n equal to 2 because that recursive formula only works for n at least 2. For n equal to 1 and 0, you don't need recursive formula to find a n. You just look at initial condition where a0 equal to 0, a1 equal to 3. Anyhow, so we go back to what we talked about. We multiply by x to the n, sum from n equal to 2 to infinity. We want to make every term become big A of some sort. Let's look at the first term. So we have sum of a n x to the n from n equal to 2 to infinity. This looks a lot like big A already. The only difference is we start at 2 instead of 0. If we expand everything out, this is precisely a, except this guy miss a0 and a1x. So the first term will just be a minus a0 minus a1x. Second term though, it is a little confusing because um, the index of a and the power of x don't match. We have a n minus 1 but x to the n. But that is an easy fix, right? So what you can do is you just pull out a common factor x out of every term Make x to the n become x to the n minus 1. And therefore, we have x times sum of a n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1. If you expand out the summation, this looks a lot like big A, except this will start at a1x instead of a0. So, second term will become x times big A minus a0. Now that we know what to do with the first two terms, the last term is pretty easy. You see, a n minus 2 x to the n. You pull out x squared, so we have a n minus 2, x to the n minus 2. 
This is precisely a because it starts at a0. So the last term will just be x squared times big A. And with that, you can plug in a0 equal to 0. a1 equal to 3. The equation will become big A minus 3x equal to xA plus 2x squared A. And then we isolate A to solve for A in terms of x. So after a bit of algebra, we have A equal to 3x over 1 minus x minus 2x squared. Alright, this is great already because we have formula for generating function of the sequence already. If you want to know a particular value of an, we can plug in this formula in some sort of calculator computer to generate out the sequence. However, we can actually do a lot better. We can actually get the closed form of the sequence and here's how. So you look at generating function 3x over 1 minus x minus 2x squared. What you can do to modify this generating function is to do partial fraction on this function. I'm not going to go into detail on how to do partial fraction. If you guys want to know, let me know in the comment section. I can make another video about it. But after partial fraction, 3x over 1 minus x minus 2x squared, it becomes 1 over 1 minus 2x minus 1 over 1 plus x. And why is this useful? Well, this you can actually expand it out to get the formula for all the numbers in the sequence. What we're going to be using is a simple geometric series. So if you have 1 plus b plus b squared plus b cubed all the way to infinity, this is equivalent to 1 over 1 minus b. Alright, so we can apply that to 1 over 1 minus 2x right away. So we can think of 2x as the b. 1 over 1 minus 2x will become 1 plus 2x plus 2x squared plus 2x cubed, so on and so forth. Or 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared plus 8x cubed, so on and so forth. Rewriting that using summation sign, that will be summation of 2 to the n, x to the n, n from 0 to infinity. We can apply the same thing for 1 over 1 plus x, except this one is a little tricky because the sign is different. What you can do is you can realize 1 over 1 plus x as 1 over 1 minus minus x, right? the good old minus minus become plus, right? And with that, you can expand it out and get 1 plus minus x plus minus x squared plus minus x cubed, so on and so forth. Or in other words, you get 1x x squared x cubed, symbol x to the n, but the sign is alternating, so it's become 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth. Writing that using summation sign, you get summation of minus 1 to the n times x to the n. Alright, so what do we have? We have Big A equal to sum of 2 to the n x to the n plus sum minus 1 to the n x to the n. And therefore, big A will just be sum of 2 to the n plus minus 1 to the n times x to the n. And that is a formula for a n. a n is simply 2 to the n minus 1 to the n. You can check that against the first two initial conditions. a0 equal to 0 and a1 equal to 3. And more importantly, you can try it by yourself that this formula actually satisfies the recursive formula we mentioned above. Alright, so that's how you find a closed form of a sequence given that you know a recursive formula for a sequence using generating function. Before I end, I'd like to discuss a little bit about the famous Fibonacci sequence. Alright, so what is Fibonacci sequence? Well, it's the sequence that starts with f0 equal to 0, f1 equal to 1, and for 2 onward, fn equal to sum of the previous two. So fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So this is a very famous sequence appear everywhere in nature that's related to something called golden ratio that appear in architecture and literature everywhere. So the question you can ask is, okay, we have recursive formula. Can we get a closed form of this sequence? And the answer is yes. So now you can use the method that I just mentioned to find closed form of Fibonacci sequence. And it should go like this. and partial fraction will be a little tricky but we have a close form of Fibonacci sequence which should look like this. Alright, and that's all I want to talk about today. Thank you for sticking around. If you have any question, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have any suggestion what kind of topic should I discuss, you can also mention in the comment down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below, share this video to your friend to your grandma, to your dog, so everyone can see it. But for today, thank you so much for watching. My name is Kong, you're watching and choose K. Until next time, keep counting. Peace.